And we're back. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, if you're in Europe and the UK and you're just getting online, welcome to ID24. Uh, we are just about to welcome uh, Shari Abuzara from W3C. Shadi is the Activity Program Lead for the Web Accessibility Initiatives International Program Office. And today he's going to be talking uh, about ways you can get started with accessibility or if you've already made that jump into accessibility, how you can help other people uh, take those first few steps. And he's going to be looking at some different resources from the W3C to help you do that. As always, if you've got any questions, then please uh, tweet us with the hashtag ID24. We'll keep a lookout for those and uh, ask Shadi your questions at the end of his talk. And so, Shadi, on that note, it's over to you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome from Vienna, Austria, uh, in the heart of Europe. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction, Lenny. Uh, yeah, I was uh, today I'd like to give you a walk through, so, through some of the resources, uh, some of the uh, very recent ones that we've just released, um, um, uh, resources um, mainly on uh, different aspects of accessibility education outreach, so be it if you're more technical or if you're less technical, uh, if you're new to accessibility or if you've been here for a while, um, to help really uh, spread the word, spread the knowledge, because um, I think one of the biggest issues of accessibility is that uh, people either don't know about it or don't have the skills to actually do something about it. So um, let me switch to the slides. I hope this works. Start screen share. So I hope you should be seeing uh, my screen now. And so, um, uh, yeah, this these slides are available online if you want. Um, I, I will be reading out the URLs as we go through. Uh, so it's really just a bunch of links. Uh, and uh, So you don't really need the slides. But if you want to follow, it's on tinyurl.com slash GAD2016, one word, hyphen or dash, Z, uh, S -A -Z for my initials. So it's tinyurl.com slash GAD, G-A-A-D, 2016-S-A-Z. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with getting started. And um, as promised, this walk through, through some of the resources. And um, really, the very first thing with getting started is getting started. Um, so <laughs> uh, many, many years ago uh, with WCAG 1, there were those quick tips for accessibility. They felt that they, they fit well on, on, a, on a business card format. It was just 10 tips to get accessibility, and it was something to pass around, and people really loved it. It was, it was easy to share, easy to give, and to give people an idea of how to get started. Um, with accessibility, um, it was things like, you know, add headings, add alt attribute um, um, at the time. Um, and and uh, with WCAG 2, we, we kind of didn't have this for a while. Uh, um, and and uh, just recently, a few uh, months ago, meanwhile, I think it was in January or February, we released those getting started tips with web accessibility um, or tips for getting started with web accessibility. Um, and, and the idea here is, again, to just provide a collection of um, pointers. People, especially at the beginning, feel overwhelmed. There's this big WCAG and, and all those other guidelines and technologies, and um, it's, it's kind of difficult uh, to get into it. Um, and, and some people kind of give up already at that stage uh, because they just feel so overwhelmed. Whereas we wanted to really communicate with this, hey, you, you can get started. They're really simple things that you can get started with right away, um, things that you can do um, easily regardless of your role. So we try to have this a bit more role-based. So we have a collection of tips for designing. And, and the address, if you want to uh, look at this resource, is w3.org slash WAI slash getting started, and that's also one word, slash tips. So w3.org slash way getting started tips will get you to this resource. And um, 
as I said, it's it's role based, so we have a bunch of resources for uh, a bunch of um, uh, tips for designers. If you're designing uh, for accessibility, things like provide sufficient color contrast, don't use color alone, um, those kind of tips. And for each one of them, it provides you with um, examples, with real examples. So it's a short piece of text. Uh, what does it mean not to use color alone to convey information? And then an example, in this case, there's a form and using the famous red color alone to communicate the required fields uh, and what you can do about it. Um, um, and also, um, uh, going back again, uh, for authors, for writers of web content who are very often non-technical people, but the majority of content really that is being published is being published by non-technical people who are just using their content management systems or whatever tools to uh, put a lot of information, a lot of content online. And also those uh, audiences need to consider accessibility. So here's also a collection of tips for those people. Um, and it's loading a little bit slowly. Not sure what's going on. Um, so those are things like provide informative, unique titles, uh, use headings to convey meaning. And again, here with each one, it should be easily digestible. So in this case, it's really just a, a two sentence paragraph. What does it mean to use headings to convey meanings? And then example uh, to visualize that, to really show what we mean by using headings uh, and the corresponding requirements um, in, in, in WCAG if, if people want to dig deeper, but really um, it's, it's already sufficient to stay at this level. And the, and the third batch that we have is developing. Uh, so this is much more for the developers. This looks at the JavaScript and in the interaction aspects and so on. So these collections of tips um, uh, I think are really ideal uh, for people who are getting started in your team or in your colleagues uh, if you know of or if you yourself are just getting started with accessibility go there first uh, and, and, and um, you can get things done right away um, without without too much delay um, we are hoping to extend these for example for accessibility evaluators if you want to get into evaluations for advocacy um, you know, getting started with advocating for, for accessibility or for managing accessibility projects. So we have ideas here of collect, uh, extending those uh, startup tips, as we call them. The next resource that I'd like to uh, also show to you, um, and, and um, it, it's, uh, it used to be called preliminary review, uh, which was really a cursory check for accessibility. Um, and now we've called it easy checks. Um, a first review of accessibility. And this is also geared to people who are very, very new to, to, to accessibility um, and also non-technical people. So this can be done by uh, most audiences and it provides um, tips on, uh, or, or actually steps, uh, easy steps on evaluating simple things in accessibility like the page title uh, of, of, of the content, uh, the text alternative, for, for images, the headings, the contrast ratio, things that people could, could do themselves. And of course, uh, this is not a full accessibility evaluation. This is just uh, a cursory review to get an idea. So the idea here is if you are starting with accessibility, you hear about accessibility, and you have no idea how is your website doing, um, with this resource, you can actually check for yourself. So here's um, how to check for the page title. It provides you specific steps, specific guidance, what to look for, what to do, what to check, um, and additional tips um, related to that that you can expand and, and, and read more. Um, how, you know, best practices and how titles should be done uh, or should not be done. <laughs> um, how to check that in different kinds of browsers. Um, so it should be something that everybody could follow regardless if you're technical or not and how much expertise you have in accessibility. And it should, if you follow those steps for any uh, web page on your, on your site, you should get an impression, um, you know, that, that most of those issues, um, you know, do, do you have a lot of those issues occurring? Uh, that's probably an indicator that even if you do a, 
a more rigorous uh, testing that that will also be the situation um, sorry I didn't read out the address for that um, resource so it's w3.org slash WAI slash eval e v a l slash preliminary um, so that's the address for this resource um, that you can uh, take a look and again uh, to, to pass on if you yourself um, you know are already beyond that stage um, yeah let's let's move on uh, to uh, another resource um, that I think also fairly early on so now you you kind of got an idea you started to do you know uh, do, do the basic steps of adding some text alternatives and headings and using colors and so on and and you started to um, you know to check your your site and see if you have uh, if you're using images correctly and so on so you, you know you, you're kind of getting into the the the, the nuts and bolts already um, and getting into the weeds uh, but really accessibility is about people and that's that's one thing that we really really try to communicate over and over um, the guidelines um, and the standards are extremely important because uh, that's kind of what you're trying to conform to that's what you're trying to achieve that's the guidance to help you make the website accessible but it's really about the people um, so there's um, a resource um, uh, called How People with Disabilities Use the Web, uh, which provides an overview for that. And the address of that is w3.org slash way slash intro uh, slash people hyphen use hyphen web. So people use web. And the full title of that is called How People with Disabilities Use the Web. And it's actually a multi-page resource. So it's a collection of resources um, to you know for those who want to read <laughs> for a for a longer read uh, but at some point I think towards the beginning um, if you really want to learn about accessibility you should try to uh, really learn about uh, the real people uh, behind that and um, and ideally actually bringing in some people at some point but before you bring in um, you know real people and, and, and deal with that it might be good to just read about some of the things and, and get your um, information up to date so the first page in this resource is called stories of web user and it's it's a collection of um, I think it's uh, what ten nine um, nine different uh, uh, fictional people that we made up um, but they are realistic, <laughs> uh, so it is actually. I think with with each of these people, I can uh, I, I can actually see re real people behind that. Um, so they are inspired by real people in in, in many of those situations, um, and um, it just describes their stories and what accessibility um, options and and uh, uh, adaptive strategies they use. Uh, in order to interact with the web so for example the first is Mr. Lee an online shopper with color blindness and, and, um, and you can read about Mr. Lee and what he does you know he wants to buy some new clothes um, and um, so it, it, it does go into a fair amount of detail um, about that person about the persona and then there are other sections in in the resource that um, you know that that pick up from that story. So, for instance, there is about color blindness. You can switch to an another section and read actually about color blindness. Uh, what is color blindness in the first place? Um, um, customized fonts and colors. This concept of adaptive strategy uh, of of, of uh, colors and fonts, but also the accessibility principles behind this. To um, make sure that content can be presented in different ways and content is easier to see and hear. Uh, we'll get into those pages. So um, you start off with a story of a real person and then you can dig more into actually um, into further um, parts of this resource and, and learn more about the background. Um, so what are those other parts of this resource? We have uh, the, the second page is, is called diversity of web users and here this is uh, maybe a bit more um, it, 
introduces really the the the, the disabilities. Uh, just the terminology here uh, for people to understand. Uh, so, for instance, auditory disabilities. Uh, what 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 is auditory disabilities? Um, here, demystifying the aspect that. Um, you know, auditory disabilities automatically means deafness. Um, what does it mean, hard of hearing, and uh, um, what what issues relate to that? So uh, again, here you have uh, more detail about the 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 the, the needs. Um, uh, some examples of auditory disabilities. Uh, also, not to forget deaf blind. Uh, people in this case as well. They also have uh, accommodation needs for uh, similar to, to, to deafness. Um, um, in the examples of barriers, what kind of barriers uh, people with, with auditory disabilities uh, may encounter? Um, so it, it really goes into more the, the terminology of, of disability uh, to, to give people a background. Again, we should not forget that a lot of people um, haven't heard of, of or, or don't know much about uh, disability in, in, in the context of accessibility. And, and, and so uh, you know, giving them a bit of that background is, is quite important. Okay, um, the third page is called Diversity in, in Web Use, and this talks much more about the assistive technologies and adaptive strategies that people use, um, so some of the tools and preferences, but it's, uh, again, also adaptive strategies, um, so, so it's not only uh, uh, assistive technologies, um, while, of course, uh, a lot of the accessibility requirements are very related to assistive technology. We also wanted to communicate about a lot of the um, needs for being able to use the website without assistive technologies um, and, and that many people actually, people with disabilities, do not use assistive technologies. Um, so um, things about content formats hearing, seeing, and feeling. So that's much more about the uh, transformation between the different types. So auditory, being able to perceive information in an auditory form or in a tactile form, um, like, like Braille, um, uh, or vibration, meanwhile, um, on mobile, um, visual um, information. So those different kind of um, uh, formats, the, the really basic formats of information, and the presentation of in the information, making it distinguishable and understandable, um, and uh, uh, the interaction aspects. So here's where keyboard aspects come in, uh, also touch screen aspects, and so on. So um, um, the last resource of this is the accessibility principles, and um, actually this is a little bit unfortunate. It's, it, it's a little bit hidden in there, um, and um, you know we, we are looking at maybe uh, bringing that up um, into a standalone page because some people feel that this is really a nice summary of actually uh, all all the, the the guidelines. So uh, this is organized using the the, the WCAG organization. The perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Um, but it talks about those concepts more generically um, and, and links, actually, to uh, all other resources. So, for example, when it talks about uh, text alternatives for non-text content under, under perceivable information, uh, it, of course, links to the WCAG requirement, uh, guideline 1.1, but it also links to UAG, and uh, for those who actually spot, it's it's um, still on UAG 1.0, so we want to update that to the later versions of the guidelines that we meanwhile have. Um, and so uh, it links here also to the guidelines of UAG that relate to that uh, requirement or that principle, and also the authoring tool accessibility guidelines. I should maybe spell spell out UAG, the user agent accessibility guidelines. Those are the guidelines for web browsers uh, and, and media players and uh, also um, for uh, uh, a lot of the mobile apps. Um, and then it, it links back again uh, to sections. So if you're reading about a principle, uh, like here, text alternatives, you can actually go back and see which stories relate to that uh, that require text, uh, that, that relate to text alternative. Um, 
which types of disabilities. So all this resource is really heavily interlinked uh, back, uh, back and forth. Uh, between each other and, and, and uh, the idea here is to give you um, a solid information about accessibility uh, and, and, and disabilities and, and, and how people with disabilities actually use the web. Okay, um, let's move on then um, and uh, look at the next resource which is uh, much more actually targeted at the uh, more, more uh, project leader or, or project manager level to um, look at how to integrate uh, accessibility into the production uh, process. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, we always say that accessibility needs to be considered early on and throughout. And so um, the address for this resource is wt.org slash WAI slash IMPL. So it's short for implementation, uh, IMPL. Um, and if you go there, you, you, you should find this resource. And it's organized according to, uh, you know, the basic uh, project management phases of uh, initiate, plan, implement, and sustain uh, beyond the project. And under each of those categories, there are tasks, things that you, you you could do uh, in, in these phases. And, um, you know, we, we needed some organization, but we, we also wanted to communicate really that it's not, not a waterfall model. And um, very often, you might actually have several things. So for instance, under initiate is learn the basics. This is really one of the very early steps is, is to learn the basic. Um, but you might already have from the plan category, um, you know, a, a review of the website. Um, you know, you got a review from somewhere and that's what actually kicked off accessibility. So you might have different uh, bits and pieces uh, of this plan already uh, accomplished and also um, depending on your own production process and your um, type of organization and skill, um, some of those aspects might be more relevant or less relevant. So, um, Again, under each of these categories, initiate um, are, are the, the, the steps here to do, uh, like uh, for initiate, you know, before you initiate the accessibility uh, or while you're initiating, you know, learning the basic, really understanding, exploring the current environment. How does it look at my organization in the first place uh, or, or, or the website that I'm dealing with? Uh, setting objectives, uh, what do we actually want to do um, and, and, and so on, uh, the, the business case. Uh, that also belongs in the initiate phase to, to, to actually think about, okay, um, you know, um, putting the, the right budgets um, in order to, to, to create that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to run through all, all the sections, but in the plan, for instance, uh, in the planning, you start creating an accessibility policies. You start assigning the responsibilities in the organization. You develop a more robust budget and resource plan. Um, and again, all this is going to correspond probably to, 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 to the usual website development plan or project development plan, um, but those are guidances here to, to, to include uh, accessibility into this overall uh, uh, project plan and, and throughout, really. Right. Um, so, so far, um, it's, it's been fairly basic, so um, just to recap, we started off with the tips, with the quick tips to get people right away, uh, then with the easy checks um, uh, to get some, some early checking, um, some background reading and how people with disabilities use the web, and this is more geared to managers. Uh, but of course, a big focus is on uh, developers and, and, and um, I think developers and designers like to actually th see things in practice. And um, one of the resources uh, that we also have, which is more practical, and actually this is also useful for uh, people who uh, um, are, are non-technical themselves and just want to see a real example of what does accessibility mean. Um, so we have a resource that meanwhile is also showing some signs of age called the before and after demo, or for short, BAD. Um, I love that acronym. So uh, the address is w3.org slash WAI slash demos slash BAD, B-A-D. Um, 
that is the address for the before and after demonstration. And what it is really, it's 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 a miniature website of uh, just four uh, pages: a home page, a news page, a tickets, and a survey page, uh, including the template that they were used to create. Um, and each of those pages is available in uh, an uh, accessible version and inaccessible version. So again, the design is a little bit uh, older. Uh, and we actually uh, are uh, going to be updated. We will be updating this this resource uh, in the near future. Um, so I'm really looking forward to having the updated uh, uh, design to, to make it more current. Uh, but the idea here is that the before and the after look uh, uh, more or less the same. Um, and, and this is to communicate that uh, you know uh, an accessible website doesn't have to be dull and boring. Um, accessibility is built in under the hood, and if it's considered from the start, um, you know you can create um, just just as equally attractive or unattractive in this case <laughs> websites um, uh, that that include accessibility. So it's it's not the accessibility that makes it uh, more or less attractive. Really, the design should not matter. And what I really love uh, about this also is. Uh, each page also has annotations, so-called annotations. So you could switch on those annotations, and um, you could highlight specific sections. So you, on the left-hand side, uh, there are um, numbers, markers, and, and if you click on those, there's there's a uh, there's an overlay uh, pop-up box uh, that talks to you about what is here. Um, what was here the fix? So this is because we are on the accessible one. If we actually switch to the inaccessible version of uh, that and, and, and look at the same pop-up, we actually see the issue. We see the problem. What What's actually the problem here? Uh, it's being highlighted. Um, so it shows you the piece of the code. It tells you the issue and the corresponding uh, WCAG uh, criteria that it did not meet. Um, uh, and again, as I said, if you switch to the to the uh, to the accessible version, uh, you can then see uh, what the the correct code is and and which technique was used to actually repair that. Um, so um, this is a very practical hands-on to actually see accessibility in action. Uh, see these. We we try to present as many of the accessibility. Uh, requirements as possible. There's also with each of those pages an accessibility report um, to actually see the full listing of um, of um, you know the, the the results for this page, the accessibility uh, performance. You can actually compare your own evaluation. You can actually get students to maybe you know if you're if you're training students up. Uh, you can actually get them to maybe you know find issues and then compare that to to the report themselves. Um, so we tried to show a, a nice um, uh, uh, broad um, collection of different um, accessibility requirements in, in in those different pages packaged in different ways. So the the news page is more much more text based. So issues relating here to text and, and, and organization and headings and so on, um, reading order. Uh, the tickets page has tables um, uh, and the issue with, with such tabular uh, information. And the survey uh, page uh, has, has a form. So here the issues relating to forms. So um, that's really the before and after demo. As I said, we, we, we are in the process of updating that, primarily the visual design, also mobile. We'd also like to add uh, maybe some more of the scripting and interactive uh, aspects and ARIA. Uh, at the time, um, ARIA was still very um, very early in its development. So um, um, unfortunately, that demo currently still does not have ARIA stuff. So. Um, Moving on, really here from the developers. So now you've actually uh, seen accessibility in action. Um, you know, one of the things that you are trying to meet is the web content accessibility guidelines, is conformance to to, to WCAG. Again, of course, the focus is on people, uh, but um, you know, this this is the standard that uh, most of us are trying to achieve. Now, WCAG during its design was really designed in a way to um, be um, 
to have multiple views, as, as, as the group called it back then. So the idea was WCAG uh, is, is a fairly small document, but it has a lot of additional uh, guiding, guiding materials, supplementary uh, materials around it, the techniques and the understanding uh, content. And, um, and uh, really, uh, it, it, together that makes a lot of information, but the idea is really how do you present that information? And, and um, early on already the WCAG, when, when, when they published WCAG 2.0, the working group had published also with a, a quick reference guide called How to Meet WCAG 2. And the address for that is w3.org slash WAI slash WCAG20 slash quick ref, one word. So quick ref for quick reference. Um, but it was a much more static kind of uh, form where you fill in, okay, which techniques, which conformance level are you trying to achieve, and you click submit, and then you get a, a customized uh, aspect uh, of, of the WCAG requirements. So you get really a cut down. Um, and so uh, we went further in, in, in a, uh, and, and this has been just recently released, I think maybe a month ago or something, um, and this, this work was funded by an EC project, a uh, European uh, Commission project, uh, to update that quick reference. So we've made it much more interactive now and, and also roles-based. So um, there, there's the left navigation has the contents of the WCAG success criteria they can click through, um, but there's also a filter tab where you can um, have different filtering aspects. So you can look at tags, for instance, for developing or for interaction design or for visual design. Um, and you can also um, you know, say, okay, I only want to look at requirements uh, for visual design. And what, what this does, what you don't see right away is it also filters the techniques uh, below that. So it selects really just the techniques that relate to visual design. Uh, when when uh, when you do that, um, there are also tags like I want you know I'm developing a carousel uh, or um, captions uh, you know all the requirements relating to captions. Let's try that out. So click on captions and everything gets filtered down. One of the things um, we noticed actually uh, you know is how often of course. Uh, success criteria 1.1.1, so it's not very evident to see um, the amount of stuff that changes uh, below, uh, f further down in the page, uh, but it really cuts down. So um, here we've selected captions, and uh, all, all the requirements that are shown are the non-text content, 1.1.1, uh, the stuff for audiovisual, so the time-based uh, guideline 1.2, the requirements under that, and that's really it. Uh, everything else is is kind of hidden, is 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 filtered, uh, filtered out, um, and and so you can customize that presentation, um, and basically hand that over. There's a share button, um, which will give you the URL, um, including the uh, parameters of the URL. Uh, which you can just copy and then give to the developer or whoever is working on this or the visual designer and just say, okay, here are the requirements uh, that you need to follow, um, including you know, the selection of techniques uh, pre-filtered already according to those requirements. Um, yeah, and, and you can continue. So this is from, from the previous uh, version already. Uh, of course, which level of, of, of conformance you're trying to achieve, which technologies you're using, and it will also filter down. So here, if I remove, uh, what was this, captions? No, let's not remove smile, but actually let's do just, just for the sake of seeing the difference. So I removed HTML here and removed all the techniques relating to HTML. Um, so it really gives you a much more customized view on the requirements uh, that are needed depending on what task you're trying to perform. Um, so you can really have this and you can, you can uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, create a bookmark or something for, for the different project. Um, actually, we still have a link to the old version in case we, we thought maybe some people are still working on a project or something and they might get a bit, uh, 
uh, concerned if, if suddenly uh, it changes. So here is the old version if, you, if you're curious or if you uh, haven't seen it before and this is how it looked really. Um, so here, here was a form that you, uh, on the right hand side, uh, that you uh, select and then uh, press. Anyway, let's move on because uh, time is uh, drawing close. Um, uh, another um, resource for developers uh, is the accessibility tutorials. Um, so those uh, tutorials uh, on, on different subjects and here we are also looking at expanding these. Uh, we do have a couple of more um, topics in, in the pipeline that will uh, be coming. So um, we have, uh, for instance, uh, uh, w w when we first started this with the tutorials, we, we wanted to cover also more uh, advanced aspects, like here is a tutorial on building carousels. Um, and it talks about the structure and the functionality, the animation. So really step by step kind of building up the carousel um, and, and, and explaining the concepts as, as, as it's doing that. Um, and we want to do also more advanced stuff. We, we have uh, another tutorial on, on, on menus, for instance, uh, all sorts of different menus. Um, and again, here it talks about the structure, the basic structure, the styling of the menus, um, flyout menus and, and, and other um, aspects, um, web application menus. So, um, but we also felt at the same time that a lot of the accessibility uh, issues and barriers that we see uh, are also very, very basic stuff. So uh, we do have a tutorial also on images, for example, um, the, the famous text alternative. Um, and it is uh, still, you know, a big issue on, on, on the web. It's, it's not it's far from solved. Um, the same with tables and, and forms. So, um, and actually, I really like the forms one. Um, it, 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 it has talks also about form instructions and validating with, with HTML5 and, and different aspects there. Um, so beyond just the basic uh, labeling and grouping uh, that, that already exists. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, th those, those uh, tutorials are sometimes, uh, you know, go from the very basics, like adding a label, all the way to uh, custom controls and, and, and more advanced aspects of that. So the address for that is w3.org slash WAI slash tutorials. Um, and, and here, uh, again, um, to get people more really deeper. And as I mentioned earlier, another resource um, is, is really that accessibility is about people and, and we shouldn't forget that. Again, you know, we keep diving into the guidelines and into technology and into all those uh, technical stuff, uh, but every now and then we should really just make sure that we all understand that this is about the people uh, behind and that all the stuff needs to work in practice. And there are a number of talks uh, today uh, from from colleagues on ID24 that you know talk about these aspects or talked already about these aspects and um, I think that's incredibly important. So the uh, we have a resource called Involving Users in Web Projects for Better Easier Accessibility. The address is w3.org slash wai slash users slash involving and it talks about involving users really from the very beginning and how effective this is to learn about the potential issues uh, or, or real issues, uh, you know, to learn from the users, uh, to develop solutions that are more effective rather than having to retrofit at the end. Uh, there, there is a companion resource called Including Users in Evaluation, which talks about more about the testing aspect with, with, with the users. And actually, that's what we started with, but we felt that this is a bit late in the game. We really wanted to communicate that you, you need to involve users from much earlier on. Um, as, you know, as, as soon as possible to really already get a lot of the requirements and a lot of the uh, ideas. Yeah, I need to move on because there's there's a cutoff. Um, and, and so last but not least really is a, a resource that we've just uh, released on Tuesday, um, two days ago, um, called Web Accessibility Perspectives. The address for that is w3.org slash WAI slash perspectives. And um, this is actually uh, videos, so in video format. And um, so this is great for introductory stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to make the loop back after having started off with, with 
easy tips and gotten all the way into you know nitty gritty of WCAG, uh, quick reference and and, and customizing WCAG, um, into something that uh, again is is for beginners but really helps as a very good entry point, uh, regardless of your uh, knowledge level. So. Um, there are 10 videos at, at, at this stage, and they're really, really short videos um, um, that, that talk about different aspects like keyboard compatibility, but also customizable text or voice recognition and the importance of that uh, and video captions. Um, and for each of these, for instance, notifications and feedback, if we go to that page, um, there is a video, but what's really, really what I want to point you to is after that video, um, there is explanation. What is notification and feedback? Who depends on this? The additional benefits. We really wanted to communicate here that accessibility does have business advantages uh, as well. And it's, you know, it's not only the cost that people keep asking, you know, how much will this cost me, but really, um, you know, what what uh, what are the advantages of of doing that as well? And uh, last. Um, you know, if you scroll further down, there's a learn more section that will actually point you to all those resources that we were talking about uh, earlier on. So to the accessibility pr principles um, here for notifications and feedback, um, the getting started tips that relate to this, the easy checks that you can do, the user stories from how people with disabilities use the web, and including uh, the WCAG 2 um, already pre-customized. So if you click that link, it will show you all the success criteria relating to errors. Um, so uh, we'll already uh, do, do the pre-filtering for you. So um, I, I hope the uh, Web Accessibility Perspectives videos is, is a good resource uh, to either help you get started if you're new to accessibility uh, or um, to pass on to others to help them get started and, and learn about all those resources that we showed today. Um, yeah, there's a collection of uh, all the resources that we just covered. Um, so that was a long walk through. Um, and um, again, the slides are available at tinyurl.com slash gad2016 hyphen SAZ. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Shari. That was incredibly useful. Um, absolutely jam-packed full of resources. Uh, you guys over at the Web Accessibility Initiative are busy people. Um, I think probably one of the most successful things that I'm aware of that you, you've spoken about is the before and after examples, because I really think, as you were saying, they're, they're able to kind of concretely demonstrate you know, what an impact accessibility has and what a difference it makes. It sounds like that's something you're planning to do some kind of more work on in the future, is that? Yes, exactly. We're looking at updating the design for this, getting some more mobile aspects, ARIA aspects, so really getting it brushed up and up to date. Um, yeah. And um, what, in your sort of opinion, are the kind of the really exciting projects that, that you've got coming up? or you're continuing to work on a, a W3C? You've obviously mentioned a few, but is there anything that's really got you particularly, you know, enthusiastic? Uh, yeah, so so last week the Education Outreach Working Group was uh, meeting and, and uh, one of the big things really coming up is uh, a redesign of the way website. And I think that's <laughs> gonna be really, really important. We have so much information and it's uh, we, we know that it's difficult to, to find the, the, the website has shown uh, age. Um, so I think that that's really gonna be incredibly important. Uh, yeah. Um, so I myself am I'm also looking a lot into conformance testing and evaluation in the mm -hmm. next while. Uh, so there's a lot of the work in auto work ag that we hope we might be able to um, really pick up and, and uh, um, get more mature. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so there are lots of exciting things uh, coming up. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like, you know, conformance and, and how the tools we use are able to measure conformance with WCAG is going to be one of the kind of the big topics probably over the next sort of 12 to 18 months by the looks of things. Is that right? 
Yeah, we hope so. I mean, c currently we're still exploring that, but but there has been really good discussion uh, in in the auto workout group. Actually, later today <laughs> uh, we have another me meeting of that group, um, and um, you know there there are lots of lo lots of interest here from different organizations who say you know we really want to get the standardized, we want to get tools, but not only tools, but the actual procedure of evaluating more consistent because right now we have people who test in different ways and, and come up with different results and that's creating a real mess in accessibility when you have you know confusing situation one person says it conforms and the other person says it doesn't um, so we're, we're, we're trying to look at that aspect. Do you think an element of that is, is needing to, to tighten up on, on some of the, the WCAG success criteria themselves? Does the work <laughs> begin there or? Is that too much of a leading question for this time of morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, you know, everything it, it needs to develop together, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, for for, for sure. And and uh, as, as you're well aware, in in the workout group, there's um, already quite a bit of discussion about uh, extensions or 2.1, and and uh, right. um, you know, and, and and sharpening some some of the things, uh, particularly relating to touchscreen and so on. Um, mm -hmm. But but still, um, you know. The, the, there has always been, I think, a need and, and uh, for 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 more robust evaluation, um, and I think we've been uh, looking at that. And, and WCAG two made a great leap from WCAG mm -hmm. one in terms of testability. Um, yes. But um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's also a sign of how accessibility is becoming more and more deployed. That people are now asking, uh, you know, uh, hey, we need more consistent approaches here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And uh, just one last thing, I know particularly within the education and outreach, you're always looking for people to get involved and, and come and help with the work that, that, that Way is doing. Is there an easy way for people to, to get in touch or to find out more about how they can get involved with the work you're doing over there? Yeah, for sure. And, and, and not only the education outreach working group, we, we really welcome uh, participation in all aspects of, of, of uh, accessibility. Uh, so there, there are a number of different groups if you're more technical, there's the uh, um, accessible platform architectures group that, that cross-reviews other uh, W3C technologies as they're emerging and, you know, in light of uh, Internet of Things and, and all those uh, evolving technologies. So, um, best, I think, uh, you can you can contact me right away. Um, so, the, the email address is shadi, uh, S-H-A-D-I, at w3.org, drop me an email and I will point you to the right person uh, uh, in, in, you know, who, who's responsible for what you're interested in. That sounds great and brilliant. Thank you once again, Shadi, for, for all that fantastic information. Uh, this is uh, Hans and I now signing off for the end of our uh, hosted block. Uh, up with you on the hour next will be our TPG colleagues, Graham Coleman and Ian Pouncey, and they will be taking care of business uh, through the next three or four hours of ID24. So we'll be back in just a few minutes at the top of the hour. Thanks, Shadi. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.